just going here real quick. Hello and welcome back to the Gomer's YouTube channel. And as you know from other presentations, we on this channel, we try to bring you good, cool and insightful uh, information about wine, beer and spirits that, uh, that we enjoy in the store. And we try and be timely with some of the things that we bring to you. Just like the last few videos, uh, we have talked about wines to go with your Thanksgiving and uh, in your upcoming Christmas meals this fall. Once again, I'm joined by Rich Zellich with uh, Pinnacle Imports. Hi, Rich. Hello. Um, and today is uh, we're going to talk uh, again about uh, some of those wines are going to go fantastic with uh, with Thanksgiving. Um, and we're going to talk about Chenin Blanc from the Loire Valley. Chenin Blanc, absolutely. Uh, I love Chenin Blanc, and I love it for a lot of the same reasons that I love Riesling, which is kind of a desert island wine for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Chenin Blanc, I think, is a little more obscure than Riesling, and so maybe because of that, people won't have as many preconceived notions. If I'm talking about Riesling and we play word association, I say, okay, I say the word Riesling, what's the first word that you think of, Pat? Mm, sweet. Sweet, and I get that nine out of ten times probably when I say this. Um, but Chenin Blanc is very bright, mineral-driven, high-acid wine that goes great with food. Oh, yeah. um, it can age for decades and decades in great examples. Again, a lot of the things that I really prize in Riesling. Uh, but you get some different notes here, some different styles. Um, as you mentioned, we're doing Chenin Blanc from the Loire, mm -hmm. but Pat, you probably carry Chenin Blanc from a couple other places. We do. World, we carry think. Chenin Blanc uh, from California, mm -hmm. um, from uh, from South Africa, and get your party trivia hat on in South Africa, uh, where it's widely planted that uh, Chenin Blanc is also known as Steen. Steen, yeah, good yeah. good little party trivia. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. like but like Rich said, these are these are lighter uh, light wines, uh, dry wines that go with some fantastic food. Um, we're going to share some some food here. Well, we're not going to share food with you. We're going to share some we're food with, all some, for with, some, with some of these wines. But <laughs> so uh, rude. but yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to what we have today. Absolutely. So uh, so a little bit about the Loire Valley. So the Loire Valley is in the western part of France. This sits north of Bordeaux. And it's basically defined by uh, the 600 miles uh, east to west that make up the Loire River Valley and its tributaries. And you'll see a lot of different grapes grown in the Loire Valley. You'll see Chardonnay, you'll see Pinot Noir, you'll see Sauvignon Blanc, uh, you'll see Cabernet Franc. But uh, my personal favorite and what we're talking about today is the Chenin Blanc from the Loire. Now, within the Loire, the Loire is broken down into a couple of different subregions. If you go pretty far east, you'll be where Sancerre comes from, uh, famously, mm -hmm. uh, which is all with Sauvignon Blanc uh, for the whites. Uh, if you go farther west, you will see Muscadet. You're in Muscadet country. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the middle Loire, Chenin Blanc is uh, kind of what you're going to see a lot. And this region uh, that we're focusing on today is called Semour, or Anjou Semour, is the larger region. And we're going to taste a Semour and a couple of Sauvignons in there as well. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and start with the first wine, um, and this has become one of my favorite wines in our portfolio really quickly. This is a guy named Arno Lambert, I'll put you front and center there, Mr. Lambert. And I've done this wine in the, the tasting room, which is where Pat and I are sitting right now. Anybody remember our, our tasting room oh, back yeah. before COVID when we could yep. do tastings? Yep, we, we miss you guys just like you miss miss the community in the room so absolutely uh, keep our fingers crossed we're, we're back in here quickly that's right hopefully one of these vaccines is going to do the trick uh, but this is a wine i really like now the new vintage has just released it's 2019 arnaud lambert claude de midi uh, samoura blanc uh, so arnaud lambert is uh kind of one of the real up-and-coming guys in the loire valley right now and his domain is actually fairly new and it was uh it was formed basically because his family's domain, at, uh, Domaine Saint Just, and another domain uh, essentially merged. He was able to take a lease on a pretty famous historical uh, property called uh, Chateau de Brise on the hill of Brise, mm -hmm. and that is what formed uh, what is now Domaine Arnaud Lambert. That was an interesting transitional period for a couple of years. Like in 2015, uh, there was a wine that they made uh, that Arnaud made called Clos David. And you could see this bottle labeled either as Chateau Berze, Claude David, or Arnaud Lambert, Claude David. And it was exactly the same wine, um, but it was kind of a transitional time. But since 2017, I believe, everything has been labeled, uh, labeled as Arnaud Lambert. Um, in, uh, you'll find uh, Chenin Blanc all over the Loire, but within um, Anjou, uh, Anjou Samour, Anjou, 
uh, I'll use that word. <laughs> the wines, I think, really hit their zenith. These wines are very mineral-driven, but they can be a little fleshier, a little richer. Riper is not quite the right word. This mm -hmm. is a cold region, um, but just have a little bit more besides just bright acidity uh, to the wines. Um, so, Pat, if you want to go ahead and dig your nose in there, I'll talk just a little bit more about Arno Lambert and um, yeah, Claude Midi. Can I have some wine? Oh, I suppose so. <laughs> I said you could put your nose in the glass, not in the lawn. Oh, All right, so there we go. So, 2019. So, this is Claude Midi, and this is um, this is one of the parcels that's really important. So, the Chateau de Rosé. I mentioned before, it's a really historic property. It's on the hill of Brise. Uh, but what happened there is a, a kind of a story that happened in a lot of places in the world. This really famous terroir, this famous, these famous vineyards, uh, started getting a lot of chemicals used in them, uh, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, things like that. And unfortunately, it really killed the soils. And if Boudin, or uh, Arnaud Lambert, rather, uh, everything he does is organic, and biodynamic. So since he took over, cool. he has begun to revive these vineyards. And it's fascinating. You can hold handfuls of soils from two different vineyards and you can see soils that are alive and you can see the difference between soils that are dead. So his vineyards now have rows of grasses between them. They're trying to um, incorporate um, grasses and good microbial life. There are insects that are really important for that just to bring this, uh, these vineyards back from the brink, basically. And a lot of these, the people who own vineyard land there, are just selling this stuff from this incredible terroir to the local co-op. And they're selling it in the street for like three, you know, three euros a liter. It's just uh, oh a gosh. waste of insanely good wow. terroir. But, um, you know, you and I talk sometimes about terroir. It's something for me that's interesting. And again, this is called the Clos de Midi. A Clos is a, a wall, usually a stone wall, that surrounds a vineyard. And I hadn't really thought about this much until I started thinking about this video today. And if you think about the great vineyards of the world, a lot of these are on hillsides. And what that means is that due to erosion, these vineyards will really change over the years and decades and the centuries. As erosion happens and, and soils move, the vineyards change. But if you have a wall around a clo, C-L-O-S, it is enclosed then you actually are preserving those vineyards or you're preserving that terroir. And I think that's a, a really, really interesting thing. Yeah, I think, you, Rich, you mentioned terroir, and, you know, I think Chenin Blanc, uh, particularly the, the Chenin Blanc that comes from the Loire Valley, you know, you go from one end to the other end, and depending on where it, it is grown, and, you know, you've got influences from the Atlantic, you've got influences from the mist and the fog from, from the rivers and the tributaries sure. that really influences well, what's going to happen um, and what's going to end up ultimately being your glass. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. I mean, the, the difference is all the difference. Uh, the terroir mm -hmm. is, the idea is that the terroir, this is French word without one any. Uh, without any one word English translation, but terroir is the culmination of all the physical aspects of a vineyard and the climate and how those changes uh, affect the finished wine. So is it hot? Is it cold? Is it dry? Is it rainy? Is it soil that drains water really well or holds water really well? Mm -hmm. Is it stony? Do the vines have to go really far to find nutrients and water? Now, all these things make a difference and we can talk about the characteristics of the Loire Valley for Chenin Blanc, we can talk about specifically uh, Anjou Saint mm -hmm. but the reality is, if you go to the Hill of Brise, the soil changes from one side of the slope to the other. So yep. the terroir, the more specific you get, the more the more terroir driven the wines are going to be. If I just say this is a wine from Samur, well, that could be from anywhere in this larger region. So um, if I say it's from Samur, but it's from this region and this vineyard and this part of the vineyard, then you're gonna get really specific expressions of, uh, of what that vineyard is mm -hmm. all about, what the grape is all about when it comes from that vineyard. Yep, yeah, no, this is, this is a fantastic, a fantastic wine. I'm looking looking at our notes here, and this got 93 points from uh, from Wine Spectator. It did. But then reading through here, it says uh, best through 2034. Now this is a white wine. White right. wines in my house don't last more than 24 hours, maybe. <laughs> Even those that we put in the you know on the wine rack in the basement, you know they don't last more than than a couple years. 
you right. know, and that's if you say, hey, Pat, you need to hold this for a couple years, okay? Right. Then we put a little tag on it that says don't drink till then. But but the 2034, that's a long time for, for a Chenin Blanc. For, uh, well, for a white wine, and especially for a white wine that um, retails for nineteen ninety nine yeah. in the store here. We always try and do a, a range of prices. There's a great wine for every budget, and we've got three different prices again today. So, yeah, this is nineteen ninety nine for a wine that you can drink now. Uh, or you can age for 20 years. And that acidity is the reason for this. That gotcha. acidity is a preservative, and just like Riesling, these wines, when they're good wines, can age for you know, years and decades, and in some case, cases a lot more. Um, when I first started working in Kansas City, we were selling wines from a producer called Poniatowski. Prince Philippe Poniatowski was the last descendant uh, of his line of Polish royalty, but he was making Vouvray, which is also in the Loire Valley from mm -hmm. Chenin Blanc. And when he decided to sell his domain, he opened up his cellars. And we were buying 89s and 90s and 93s. Wow. And the 93s were too young. Like, the 90s were smoking too good. Young. Big wow. Botrytis vintage. We'll talk about Botrytis uh, at, at a little uh, later date. Um, but stunning, stunning wines. Now, not everything from the Loire Valley is going to age for decades. Mm -hmm. Most of this area is really made up by, by co-ops, uh, larger... Uh, co-ops that do cheap cremants um, that aren't really impressive. But when you get really top-notch Chenin Blanc from a top producer, yeah, it's, I'm not surprised at all that Wine Spectator, A, that they gave it 93 points because right. what a wine. Mm -hmm. uh, but they said that this would age for a really long time. Uh, it's uh, important to, to remember that if you're drinking these wines young, the acidity is a really dominant characteristic. It's sometimes, I would say, aggressive acidity. And so it's important not to drink these wines too cold. Um, I had chilled these this morning, put them in my um, insulated bag, brought them here to the store, and let them sit out for a little bit while we were waiting to, to start the uh, iPad camera rolling here. Um, so don't serve these too cold. And either decant them if they're young, or maybe, uh, I don't know, Pat, what do you think? Have them with some food? Just definitely have them with some food. Why, Absolutely. Then why don't we food. have we, them with some food? We have some, some food here. We've, we've done things properly today. Yeah. Uh, I uh, spoke with Guillaume, the chef owner at uh, Cafe des Amis, along with his wonderful uh, wife, chef owner uh, Ingrid, and um, asked him for something wonderful to pair with Chenin Blanc. And Chenin Blanc, I really love with richer dishes, uh, with creamy cheeses and things like that. And what we have today is a little quiche Lorraine. Oh. Um, this is a classic French dish, and I think the perfect foil oh my gosh. For, uh, for this. What do you think, Pat? Oh, that, my goodness. It's just a, a great marriage of the wine with the creaminess of the cheeses and the egg that just in the little bit of protein and the you know and the and the meat and the quiche this is just oh this is fantastic dynamite well that's what we want you know anytime yeah. um, i'm thinking about pairing food with wine you can make yourself really crazy uh, but if you think about the weight of food and the weight of wine that can be really instructive so you know turkey's not a, a very heavy meat uh, and so you want a wine that's not really heavy as well. I'd call these wines all light to medium light bodied. Would you agree with that? Pat? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And so kind of the same weight as uh, as turkey. So anytime you're doing food and wine pairings, try and keep the weight of the food and the weight of the wine in mind. Try and keep those kind of complementary. And traditionally, you want the if you're having uh, food and beverage, traditionally you want the beverage to be a little sweeter than the food uh, with which you are having it. Everything we're doing today is dry. These are all dry styles of Chenin Blanc. But, uh, Pat, I think we're going to do a video on dessert wines we are. for Thanksgiving. Yep. yep, coming up. And so we'll talk a little bit about sweeter styles of, uh, of wines, of Chenin Blancs. And we'll talk about uh, that Noble Rock, that Botrytis Cinerea that you sometimes see in uh, the Loire Valley as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. cool. Well, I'm going to pour you right. the second wine and then uh, talk a little right. bit about it. And then I'm going to have some quiche Lorraine. Okay. So we are uh, doing our best to social distance here. Pat and I do have a screen between us. Thanks again for the people who gave us recommendations on uh, ideas for the videos. They are well appreciated, and these are really for you guys. Yep, keep, um, well, keep them coming. Absolutely. All right, so what we have now, we're going uh, from Samour, uh, a wine labeled as um, as Samour, Samour Protégé specifically, uh, an AOP, to Savignier. And I think it's important to understand that these are different regions, basically. So uh, Anjou Samour is a larger region. The town of Samour actually sits south of the Loire Valley. Seven years is pretty far uh, west and sits north of uh, the, Loire, uh, the Loire River. And 
almost always the wines of Sauvignon are dry. There are exceptions. They're really amazing exceptions. Uh, but the one we have today is no exception. This is a dry, um, dry Chenin Blanc mm -hmm. uh, from a really significant winery uh, in some years called Beaumard, Domaine Beaumard. Uh, I'm going to pour myself a little bit here as well. Uh, so these are widely considered to be some of the greatest uh, Sauvignons, uh, and this is a family-owned winery. Um, Jean, Lombe, uh, Jean uh, Beaumard, rather, and his son Florent uh, Beaumard uh, run the domain, and this is kind of their entry-level wine. This is just labeled as their Sauvignons. They do some higher-end stuff, but again, we're trying to stay in uh, a couple of different price ranges here. This one is actually thirty-five ninety-nine, so we're a little bit more than the uh, Clos de Midi, but this is a a pretty different wine. Yeah, Pat, would is, you agree with that? This is definitely this is much different on the nose than um, than the first one. You know, this is still got that that lighter lighter style. You still get some some golden apple and some pear and those flavors, but you can tell there's some more minerality that, that is coming through on this one than than on the first one. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think uh, the Lambert wine is really defined. It's got great minerality, but I think it's defined more by the acidity. Whereas here, I mm. think it's that real smoky minerality that gives so much yeah. of the character here. There's a little bit of a honeyed characteristic, kind of a beeswax thing, and you'll see more of those as the wines age. Um, but the thing that really comes across for me is this flinty, almost gunpowdery, real mm -hmm. stony, steely minerality yeah. on this wine. Yeah, definitely, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, there's a, there's a great upfront appeal to this wine, but you know, um, how's that, uh, Work with the with the food with well, the quiche. I'm about to find You're out. About to I'm find gonna let out. you talk about the wine a little bit more, <laughs> right? Uh, and I will. Uh, I'll eat a little bit of quiche. Very cool. No, this is great. You know, this is. Uh, you know, and again, these these are wines that uh, that'll go with with uh, the the fair for for Thanksgiving. As Rich mentioned a little bit ago, that you can definitely drive yourselves absolutely crazy with. Oh, I need to pair this with the turkey and this with with this wine with the stuffing because it's got sage and, and yeah. spices and oh I need a wine to go with the pumpkin pie and the ice cream and all that and no you can really drive yourself crazy but if you just get a couple three wines that are great food wines mm -hmm. it'll you know the the wines and the food will will marry and you'll have a you'll have a fantastic food experience yeah absolutely and, and everybody's palate is different mm -hmm. these videos are designed to give you some ideas and maybe some recommendations and tell you a little bit about these wines um, but the most important thing to remember is that wine's meant to be shared it's meant to be shared with yep. people you care about um, so when you're with your family for Thanksgiving, if you're having a good time, probably anything is going to taste good, but you may as well have great wine right. uh, while, you're, while you're doing that. That's right. So let's do a truly great wine. All right. This is, this is poetry. Uh, this is a, a pretty big deal. So for wine number three, we are doing Sauvignon again from a gentleman who is a true rock star. Uh, this is a gentleman named uh, Thibaut Boudignon. And it's rare to find guys like this because in the space of just a couple of years, Bouillon's wines have gone from being things that nobody had ever heard of to being really sought after wine. So if you go to Paris and New York, you're going to Michelin starred restaurants and you look at the Loire Valley section, you're gonna see wines from Giberto, who's already become a rock star and it's hard to get those wines, and you're going to see wines from Thibaut Boudignon and a little bit from Arnaud Lambert now as well. So we're kind of catching these guys while they're on the ascendant, on their oh, way to great. rock star greatness, when the wines will then be impossible to get right. unless you're in Paris or New York. Um, we don't get a lot of these as as it is. So this, is a, uh, this is a pretty small parcel that this particular wine comes from. Um, so the wine that we have, this is the 2018 vintage of Thibaut Boudignon Sauvignon Clos de la Hood. Mm -hmm. um, Boudignon is actually from Bordeaux. He's not a gentleman from the Loire Valley, and uh, he actually didn't do his his studies in um, in the Loire as well. He actually made wine in Burgundy, studied in the University of Beaune, and then made wine uh, in Gevry Chambertin for Charlepin before heading to the Loire Valley and becoming the uh, maitre de chais, which is essentially the cellar master for this incredibly significant winery there called Chateau Suchery. Uh, I'm not sure if he is still the maitre de chais there now or if he is just focusing on his own wines because he's become a pretty busy dude. Uh, but he is he is one of the real, real rock stars. Uh, this is the upper end of what you would typically see these wines going for. This is $85.99, but 
when you smell this wine. There's when you taste this damn. wine. Um, so this is fascinating for me. I actually had some of this in the glass and let it sit in the glass for a little bit. And initially, it was so elegant and delicate's not quite the right word because that suggests that maybe it's um, it's not a wine with a lot going on. But that's right. completely not in. Oh no! Not this is, case this is a heavyweight. This has got. Yeah. yeah, this has got a lot going on. There. There's more smoke here, more mineral. There's this great tropical fruit to go mm -hmm. with the tree fruits as well. This is mm. this is really amazing. This is actually an old religious property. It's a seven hectare property that surrounded a monastery. The building is still there. It's not used uh, as a monastery anymore. Um, but boy, there is something truly miraculously good about this particular wine. Yeah, there's something good. about this one. This wine is so different on the nose than the first two. Um, and it just like you said, there's, there's more minerality. It's, it's a little bit it's a little bit heavier um, on the palate maybe. But there's did there is there oak? Did is there does he is he aging this in, in new oak? Yeah actually uh, good catch man. I mean, um, yeah there's about fifteen percent new oak here. This is actually aged in oak, but of varying sizes. So there's some 250 right. uh, liter casks, some 350, some 500 li uh, liter casks. So some larger ones that don't impart much of that oaky characteristic. And what Boudignon is going for is not to impart characteristics of oak like of vanilla and coconut and dill or mocha. Basically, he is looking for um, the, the wood and the porous uh, porosity of the barrels to add mouthfeel on the wine and but it, it works here I and mean, this is oh, just man. this is <clears throat> this is ethereal it might this be it might be the right word oh my goodness this is fantastic that even and perfectly balanced with the the creaminess of the quiche and the cheeses and the ham and eggs and everything man the first two wines went really well with this but boy this is this is I don't even know what the word is. The, I can tell you what I think the word is. The owner of Pinnacle Imports refers to this as genius wine, and this is this is genius. This mm. is a it's guy great. at the top of his game mm. um, who is still learning, but is already one of the great rock stars from a really special parcel, making wine in the best way he possibly can, and the, the mm. results are truly, truly remarkable. This Man. is this is. Well, I'm having more. This is really yeah. Wonderful. This this is this is fantastic. And Bill, you uh, yeah, genius. I, I would absolutely 100% agree with that. This is mm. this is one to uh, like you said. There's not a whole lot of this available, and uh, this is one to buy and and throw in uh, in your cellar. Keep it cold in the cellar and and bring it out. Ten years. Yeah, we had uh, we had one case of this. I've opened a bottle of it, so there are eleven <laughs> bottles left of this. <laughs> okay, um, for the city. So sadly, not a lot of this, but uh, yeah, truly, truly worth speaking uh, seeking out. Pat, thank you for uh, yep. letting me talk about Shannon. Uh, you tasting got it. a little thank wine you. with me. And uh, cheers. We'll see you on the next one. All right, thank cheers. you, folks.